Hi, Kevin Retro here, First Meridian Mortgage. Today, what I want to discuss is skipping two mortgage payments while doing a refinance on your mortgage, or skipping one. All right. So everyone has heard or gotten a piece of literature in the mail that says do a refinance, skip two payments, blah blah blah. blah. So just to let you know, you really don't get to skip paying the interest on the mortgage. You may not mail out the payments, which will feel like you're skipping the payments. But let's go through the math, tell you the pros and cons of how you, how you can set up your mortgage either to skip the payments or to bring the money to the closing table. But one way or another, the lender is always going to get paid, the old lender or the new. Okay, so let's kind of uh, go through it. Just to reiterate that everybody knows, when you make your September payment here, your interest is in arrear, so you're really making August's interest payment accordingly. So when you make that September payment, and you've paid all of the August interest, in this scenario, we're saying your balance on your loan at that point, the principal balance is $200,000. We're also going to use in this example, closing cost on the refinance are $3,000. Escrow startup is $2,500. You want to check out the video uh, on how escrows are calculated. Um, check that out on YouTube. Also, there is a no closing cost uh, refinance how to actually get this closing cost paid for on your behalf also on uh, my channel all right so in this scenario two thousand dollars a month is our payments and let's just say we close on the 15th of the month close on the 15th of the month the last payment you made was September 1st you owe the old lender 15 days of interest we're going to call that $1,000. So now you owe the old lender $201,000. $1,000 of its interest, $200,000 in principal. That is this number here. We call that your payoff. All right. Now, the exciting new loan is due his 15 days of interest, and this is your prepaid interest. It's the only time you're ever going to prepay interest on that specific mortgage. We're going to call that $1,000 also. That is your prepaid interest to the new lender. So at closing, you also have to bring your closing cost and your escrows. So your total obligation in this one month cycle is $207,500. Now here's the decision. Do you bring $7,500 to the closing table and only finance $200,000? Or do you elect to do $207,500 and bring no money to the table? That is a no out of pocket deal. That is not a no cost deal. No out-of-pocket deal. If you did two hundred and seven thousand, you are essentially rolling in twenty-five hundred, three thousand, and two thousand. You actually get to this is the skipped payment. You get to skip that first payment's not due and uh, until November one, and you get uh, your current escrow account back from your current lender typically within thirty days. So of that. $7,500 you added to your mortgage, you would get in your hand your escrow and you skip a payment, you're really taking cash out of $4,500. $4,500 from $207 is $203,000. $200 and your $3,000 in closing costs. Option two, what a lot of people do is they might just roll in their closing costs and do $203,000 bring $4,500 to the table, get their escrow back, skip a payment, they're back to even within 30 days, they only rolled in $3,000.
if you did a no cost and had a lender credit that covered this closing cost, then you would do 200,000. Bring the seven grand to the table. Lender pays the closing cost credit. You get your escrow back, you skip a payment, you're back to 200,000, you're back to even, okay? So that is your one month scenario, okay? Pros and cons of all of that is, if you do roll in uh, all of it and do zero out of pocket, you increased your principal balance by $7,500. If you have a lower interest rate, you still may have a lower payment that may not bother you, but you did still take out $4,500 additional cash. So if it was me and I was just trying to still, uh, you know, keep my balance as low as possible, cash flow net zero, you could do 203. If you weren't getting any lender credit, do 203, skip a payment and get your escrow back and your cash flow will be back to normal within 30 days. So what about the two month scenario? That gets a little, a little bit different. So. How they do that is instead of you mailing out this payment, they have you close on the 10th and they tell you don't make that payment, okay? So when you don't make that payment and the first payment you made here, you owe $200,000 principal, and now you owe 40 days of interest to the old lender, 30 plus 10. So we're gonna call that $2,700. So in this scenario, 202,700 is your payoff. Two payment scenario, here's your new payoff. Remember, no free lunch, here's that prepaid to get to the end of the month. All right, so that is right there. So now, two grand, two grand, 200,000. 204 is your obligation there. Closing costs, escrows. Now you're at $209,500. Goes back to the same scenario. You could do 209,000 and have a no out of pocket. You would then would have skipped this payment and skipped this payment. First payment would not be until December in this scenario. You'd skip two payments, get your escrow back. That's sixty-five hundred dollars of the nine nine thousand five hundred if you brought it to the table, or if you finance that, you're left with the three grand. Again, if you could get a lender credit to cover that, perfect. Okay. Uh, Either way, if you wanted to be cash flow neutral, you would do 203,000 and bring $6,500 to the table. Bring $6,500 to the table. You skip two payments, that's four uh, times 2K, that's 4K. Get your escrow back and you're back to zero. Okay, so keep in mind, in all of these equations, there's a pros and cons to rolling it in or bringing the cash to the closing table, but the quasi skipping the payment is only not mailing it out. You actually have to meet your monthly obligations at closing, whether it's for one month or two month, when you do your refinance. So in conclusion, there's no real skipping of the payments. You bring the money to the closing table. But how you do that and the effects it has on your family can have dramatic differences. If you have a credit card, five, six grand, that has been nagging you and you haven't been able to get it paid off, you could roll it in and essentially be taking some cash out that would allow you to pay that down. And the loan would not be considered cash out in conjunction with doing the financing. So that is a 
pro benefit if used appropriately. Okay. Um, how you manage your cash flow is ultimately up to you. But understanding the transaction, every loan officer should be educating you on what exactly they are doing on your behalf. So if someone says, skip two payments, you have to ask yourself, how much money am I bringing to the closing table? If it's zero, they're rolling everything in. If you're cool with that, I'm cool with it also. My name is Kevin Retcher, owner of First Meridian Mortgage. 703-799-5626. To all the Marines out there, I say Semper Fi. Talk to you soon.